Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to share nine essential Calendly features that you may have missed. Now, this video really is intended for people who are already using Calendly and I'm assuming you understand the basics and you've got maybe some event types set up. This video is intended to help you sort of reach that next level and just squeeze a little bit more uh, value and functionality out of Calendly. So one of the first things I want to mention is the ability to create one-off meetings. Now, most people who sign up to Calendly use it the way I do, which is you set up different event types for different types of meetings and different durations that you want to meet. So for example, if I want to meet with a client for an hour, I will send them the link to this call with Paul one hour meeting. And I've got ones for 30 minutes, 90 minutes, and so on. That's how most of us get started with Calendly. But sometimes, it's hard to fit into one of the times or it's, or people can't quite pick a time in your availability within one of these options. So what you can do is create a one-off meeting. This gives you the ability to choose a meeting duration, let's say an hour, and then I can set some times where I'm potentially available. Let's say there, there, and there. I can add uh, multiple hosts. Um, I can change time zones here if I want to send the meetings in different time zones. And once I have selected the options that I want to send somebody that I'm available, I go onto the next screen. I can give this a name so I can say meeting to discuss ABC. Uh, I can choose a location, in which case, you know, maybe I want to connect my Zoom account. I've got Zoom integrated with my account already, so I can uh, automatically set up a Zoom event or meeting. I'm going to add some extra information in here, just put in some text. And, uh, and then I can, what's really cool down here is I can reserve these times. This is particularly handy because I'm sending Calendly links to all sorts of people all of the time. Now, because I've selected that I want the, to send somebody these three times for a potential meeting, I don't want to then get booked at one of these times and then one of these slots becomes unavailable. So I can reserve these times. I really like this feature. So now that I'm ready, I can publish this meeting and I can create a unique link which I can send somebody or I could add these times to a specific email. I could copy this to my clipboard and just paste it into an email. I actually just like sending the link so I can copy that link. I can put that into an email, I can put it into a text message and I can send somebody a link where they are gonna see a page that looks like this. So here is the one-off meeting that I set up with the different times available, my description and everything ready to go. So really useful little feature for those ad hoc meetings where uh, you know maybe somebody can't quite find a time in your normal event types. Another really useful feature worth spending some time with once you have set up your event types and you've kind of mastered the basics is workflows. What workflows are is a way that you can automate more of the email reminders, follow-ups, and text message alerts that go along with a, a meeting. So there are some really good examples here. For example, when uh, a meeting is booked, you can email a reminder to the invitee or to the host. After a meeting is done, you could send a thank you to the invitee. You can send text reminders to the host before or after. Um, there's, there's some other examples down here. I actually quite like just starting from scratch and, and seeing the different options that are available. And like many automation tools, this works on a sort of trigger action system. So I can say, when this happens, for example, when an, uh, an event ends, uh, and I can program in some kind of delay here. So let's do, um, maybe let's just do an hour, uh, an hour after my event. I want to send an email to the invitee. I want to thank them for coming to the meeting. So I'll go on to my next screen. I'll give this a name. So uh, post meeting, thank you email. I can then choose which of my event types do I want this apply to, to apply to. Uh, for example, I use these yellow ones here for all of my client meetings. For clients that I'm already working with, I use these event types to schedule with them. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna trigger this automation after my client appointments. I don't need to send them after introductory or sales calls because I have other emails that I want to send after those anyway. So I'm just gonna use it on these three specific event types. So there we go, one hour after this ends, send email to invitee, and I can click into here, I can edit this information, I can even uh, populate and customize the email with specific variables. So I can say, hi, let's just put in uh, the person's name, 
Where did it go? Invitee first name, there we go. Whoops. Thank you for attending the meeting. Regards, Paul. And uh, yeah, that'll that'll be fine. Oh, I'll put my subject in there. Okay. So once I have my email ready to go, I can actually add multiple actions in here. I could then send a text. I could send another email a day later. I can queue up multiple actions. So this workflow automation feature really is pretty powerful in terms of what you can do to send texts and emails um, before or after your meetings, which is really cool. So once I'm done, yeah, I'm just gonna click save. And now that is ready to go. That's just gonna run in the background. A feature that I find people often miss, especially new users when they are setting up their event types, is linking a tool like Zoom or Microsoft Teams so that you can easily integrate your video conference software. So you have this location here and you can just type in here some text and say what the location is. But when you actually connect your in this case, I'm gonna use Zoom. When you connect your Zoom account and that's linked to my Calendly account, when somebody books a call with me, this is actually going to set up a meeting in my Zoom account. So when I open the Zoom app on my Mac, I can actually see all of my upcoming meetings in here, when they're coming up, what time they are, and I didn't have to lift a finger. Calendly actually created these all for me at the appropriate time based on the time that somebody selected when they booked the call with me. So it's just a really simple way to um, create those new meetings uh, and directly integrate, in this case with Zoom, and it's gonna create a new Zoom link for every single meeting. So I don't have to use my generic Zoom room uh, for, for my calls. I can have a unique meeting room every time, which is great. Another feature that not a lot of people know is that by default, obviously, you can just share a link to one of your event types. For example, if I wanna just book an hour call with a client, I can send this link down here. But you can also, you get your own sort of account level scheduling page, so calendly.com slash paulminers in my case. And from this page, customers or clients can book or choose from a variety of different event types. I don't have to just send one link, I can actually link them to this sort of higher level page and they can pick from multiple event types if I've got different durations. Now you'll notice here that I've actually only got two event types showing here, the two green ones. I don't want to show any of these other ones, uh, just for my use case, how I'm using Calendly. When I send somebody my generic link, I just want these two appearing. So what you can actually do on an event type, you'll actually notice this little eye with the line through it. This is what's called a secret event type. Uh, actually, let me edit this one. So if we go edit, if I go to this section here and then advanced, right down the bottom here, you'll see this option, make this a secret event. That means that this event type will not show on my, uh, my user sort of booking page. And so this is useful if you just want to send somebody only a, a, a collection or handful of event types, um, but you want to keep other event types secret, maybe because they're paid or they're for only certain types of situation. A really powerful way that you can take Calendly to the next level is to connect it with other tools and systems that you use using Zapier. Zapier, if you haven't heard, is a really powerful automation tool that really connects different systems together. So I won't go into all the detail of what this is doing, but here is an example Zap where this is triggered by uh, a new invitee being created in my Calendly account. So what that means is when somebody books a call with me, Zapier sees that happen because Calendly is connected to Zapier. Then what I have is a bunch of actions being performed. I won't talk about everything that's going on in here. Long story short, what I'm doing is I'm finding or creating a new contact and a new deal in my sales CRM, which is Pipedrive. So what that allows me to do is I can create an event type I can use those consulting introductory call event types, these two green ones here. I can embed them on my website and get people booking calls with me. And through the power of Zapier, when a booking is received, it, all that information automatically goes into my CRM and I don't have to lift a finger. So that's a really powerful way of really taking Calendly to that next level is um, playing with Zapier, connecting it with the other tools and systems that you use. Actually, one more thing I do with Zapier is these two green ones go into my sales CRM, which is Pipedrive, these yellow ones, which are for my existing clients, they go into Asana. So I can have Zapier create tasks for me in my Asana account. So depending on what tools and things you use, there's obviously loads of potential things you can do with Zapier. 
Another sort of little hidden feature that I find some people often miss is that when somebody books a call with you, and obviously you have your calendar connected, you need to have it connected for Calendly to really work, but you can allow Calendly to create a calendar event on your calendar where both you, the host, and the invitee, the person who booked the call, are both invitees on that calendar event. So what that means is you have a shared event, and if I need to, I can move that around. If I need to reschedule it, I can actually just move it on my calendar, and the invitee will get that change on their calendar as well. What that also lets me do is if I delete that appointment on my calendar, it will actually delete both the Calendly booking that was received, so the invitee will get an email saying that the appointment has been cancelled, and if I've got Zoom connected, it will also delete the connected Zoom meeting as well. So just enabling that calendar invitation and integration is really worth doing to make making future updates to your events really quick and easy. Another hidden little feature that, again, people sometimes miss is that you can customize the message that appears here on your Calendly booking page. So this is on that generic sort of high level page. And this is set if you go to account and then account settings you'll land on a page like this. And so you can see this is just the welcome message that I've typed in. I just want to make it clear, like, please only book a call with me if you want to explore my services. And so that can appear in here. So it's a nice way of just instructing people how you would like them to use the different event types that you've set up or, or give them recommendations on what to do. What I will sometimes do with this message as well is if I'm taking time off or over the holidays, I will actually customize this and I'll sometimes say something like update, I'm unavailable from X to Y date over the holidays. And so when I save that, and refresh my page. It's just something that I do at the end of the year when I'm taking time off. People know, okay, I'm booking a call, he's unavailable from these dates, and it's just a nice little message that, that's useful for, for people to see. Now, when you are setting up your Calendly account, it's really important that you come to the calendar connection settings and check what you're, you've set up in terms of checking for calendar conflicts. What this does is it's where you can tell Calendly if I have events booked in any of these calendar categories, don't allow bookings. So if I have something booked in my appointments, which is where all my meetings go, don't allow any bookings if I've already been booked. That's kind of obvious. Uh, poll is kind of the same thing. It's the default one in my Google Calendar account. I also have this pipe drive calendar because I'm syncing activities from my CRM to my calendar. If I'm making time for calls and meetings, I don't want Calendly to allow bookings on top of those uh, pipe drive activities. So I've, I'm having it check for conflicts there. I also use this busy calendar. So if I don't want to be booked during a certain window of time, I will actually create my own appointment under the busy calendar. And it's just a way of me blocking out time for myself so I can't be booked. But this Muse calendar, this is kind of the word I use for my business, I will schedule tasks for myself. Now, Calendly can actually book on top of those. I don't mind, I can move things around if needed. Um, but the long, the long and short of it here is, check what calendar settings you've got set up and check which calendar categories you are, uh, or Calendly is checking for conflicts. Because you don't want to be booked at a certain time if you're already unavailable. And you also do want to allow the maximum amount of availability as well. And finally, a really useful feature that is particularly useful if you're using Calendly for Teams is you can allow, uh, you can use event types to allow multiple people to be booked for a call, whoever's the most available. So here I have this consulting call, it's one hour, and I'm using a round robin scheduling between myself and Holly. So what Calendly will do is it's optimizing for availability here. I could optimize for equal distribution if I want to make sure that we each get an equal number of calls, but I've said, Optimize for availability. So that means Calendly is gonna look at our combined availability and it's gonna present all of those times to whoever is making the booking. Now in this case, this is what's really cool, I can set the priority for different individuals. So in this case, if Holly and I are both available at the same time, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning, it's gonna book Holly first. She is the higher priority person to book with. I am then the second priority. If Holly's unavailable, I will then be booked at 10 a.m. So this is a really great way, uh, since I have started using Calendly more within a team, to involve multiple people in the booking process, but prioritize who those calls should be allocated to. 
So those are some of the really useful, slightly more hidden features within Calendly that I find really useful. Um, I definitely recommend just kind of digging through your Calendly account, checking through the different event type settings, and you will see that there's a lot of little levers and buttons you can press to really customize Calendly to get it working the way that you like. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.